Mikel, thanks for your time today. How have you been since we last saw you? I am good. I'm healthy. My family is healthy. Um, I've been working for the club, spending time with the players and, and spending time with the family and, and communicating with my relatives like uh, we all do. What's a typical lockdown day for the Arteta family? Well, I get up quite early. I like to spend an hour or two in the office by myself. And then by nine o'clock, my three kids normally come down. So I have some breakfast with them and, and my wife as well. And, uh, and then I start to make phone calls, I start to organize work, I start to communicate in with my staff, background staff, and the senior people at the club. And, uh, and then we have some lunch in the last few days in the garden because the weather has been really, really good. And then after that, I get back to, to work, put things in place, do some individual meetings, some unit meeting with the players. And um, and then have dinner with my family again. Watch a, a kids movie. <laughs> I've been watching like 35 kids movies in the last five weeks. But uh, yeah, we have time for everything. A lot of your day is spent communicating with coaches, players, and staff. You talked last time about the psychological support that that people need. People deal with this in different ways. What does that psychological support look like? We're having feedback from different people. We're constantly sending information and videos and and keep them busy and as well keep them close to their job and close to the people that are related to the job, which is us and my coaching staff, you know. But um, we've been having some really good conversation. This time it's been really helpful from my side at least to get to know the players better. And um, and we are trying to, to improve our relationship, our communication and, and the understanding between us. You also said last time you're giving the players a lot of homework. What is that exactly and how does it differ from player to player? Uh, we have to try to use this time, as I mentioned before, to try to get to know each other as well. But uh, we have to develop professionally, you know, and there are a few aspects um, that I want to to improve, change or develop and individually are different for each other. So I put a plan for each player of the areas that we believe uh, they can improve, but as well in bringing confidence that all the things that they do right, that they have to try to maintain and keep, you know, that they are really relevant for the team and the way we play and make emphasis as well on, on how we behave, maintain our culture, make sure we are looking after the people around us that we really care about who we're working with and, uh, and basically made them realize as well how lucky we are to work in the environment and the world and the, and the context that we are all in on a daily basis. Can you give us one piece of detail there on what you mean by an area to improve in, maybe a tactical area, for example? Uh, there is so many, but uh, I like to dissect the game in, in different aspects, but uh, we're going through individually with them in all those three big uh, aspects, but then we are putting clips together and we are putting parts of games for the players to analyze individually. And after that, they have to find the solution. They have to tell what they did wrong or right. Why this scenario happened? Could they avoid that before it actually happened? A lot of times it's just about communication. Not, uh, other times it's about the positioning, about other times it's about the body shape, is the technique, how they have to defend. It's a lot of things, and um, and it's been uh, the feedback has been really good. And after the way they have been processing the information for the next one, it's been superb. And some of the young players, I've been very very impressed with them. Yeah, people all over the world have got homework to deal with at the moment. How are you checking the players do theirs? Is it those one to one conversations? Very easy with the technology. We know when a player has downloaded the game, if he's done the homework. They have to report everything to me so they cannot escape. Uh, and uh, to be fair, they've been really good. They've been doing the, the task uh, the way we ask them to do. And, and in that sense, we have no concerns. And as for you, Mikel, and the coaches, of course, are you treating this like you would June in a typical year where it's, it's almost like a planning phase, a pre-season phase, which you didn't get, of course, when you came in, in December? That's what we are trying to do. We have some time to review what we've done as well and the things that we have to, 
to improve as a team and as a coaching staff as well and made a big reflection on all the departments we have across the club um, how they are feeling as well about what we did, what we're doing, um, how we have settled at the club. If they have any ideas for us to improve, we are more than welcome to have them across. Um, and as well, basically, how the workflow can be better. And uh, so, we we'll make sure that when we are back, we don't know in which condition, how long we're going to have, make sure we are ready to hit the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And and I suppose scouting comes into this as well. At this time of year, people start to think about the summer if it was a typical end of season. Is scouting something you can still do effectively? Absolutely. We have a lot of meetings to try to plan a decision. Um, we might have one, two, three different scenarios. We have to be prepared for all of them. I know a person that likes improvising a lot. Um, so, yeah, we have to know that the circumstances can change every week, you know, and we have to be prepared as a club to react to that and, and adapt. Just finally, Mikel, you're in an interesting room there in your house. Can you just give us a, a bit of insight? What's behind you? What's that up in the, in the top corner of the shot there? That's Eusebio. That's a, a player that I admired and a friend of mine got me some boots that he played when he used to play in, in Portugal. There's some... My kids and myself when I go to Arsenal, a few phrases that I like and I encourage always my family to follow and some book, some psychology book because uh, before I coach, I think you have to be a psychologist almost to, to deal with, with the people and, and the different characters and cultures and mix that we have at the moment in, in our football club. So yeah, we're dealing with people, their energy, and, and we have to try to, to commit them to and believe to what we do.